In 2016, the information space exploded. It seemed like China was starting a project that would become one of the most complex and, at the same time, one of the most useful things the PRC has ever managed to implement on its territory. This time, the construction had to be done underwater, on the water, and above it. The only thing left was to send workers to build underground, on land, and above it to cover all possible challenges. But even without that, there were already a bunch of incredibly tricky problems that needed solving. But does anyone doubt that the Chinese can overcome anything? Millions of tons of materials ended up in the water, and thousands of workers toiled away in the heat using specially designed equipment for the project. The result is a whole system, with each part setting some kind of construction record after it was completed, allowing one of China's key regions to keep developing at an incredible pace. Want the details? Well, that's exactly what we're here for today. The project started to come to life between two cities in southern China Shenzhen and Zhongshan. If you're wondering whether these two cities really need such an expensive project, well, first of all, this is China, where billion-dollar mega-projects are the norm. And second, how else could you improve the conditions in cities that are top players in China's economy? Shenzhen is a prefecture-level city, and its importance is clear just by looking at its GDP ranking. First is Shanghai, China's most developed city. Second is the capital, Beijing, that's pretty clear. And third is Shenzhen. As of 2022, its GDP reached over 3 trillion yuan or $482 billion. That's more than, for example, Malaysia, Vietnam, or Denmark. In fact, it's almost the same as the entire UAE. The importance of Shenzhen can also be highlighted by the fact that it's in the top 10 cities with the largest economies in the world. It ranks 8th in terms of competitiveness and is one of the largest financial centers globally. Also, it takes 6th place in terms of the number of billionaires, according to the Huruan Research Institute's top list, there are 84 billionaires in the city. It also has a bunch of other interesting advantages, like being second in the world for the number of skyscrapers, 19th for the number of research institutions, and so on. The media even call Shenzhen, China's Silicon Valley. In short, Shenzhen is an alpha city, and though we didn't just make that up, based on all its achievements, the city is considered one by the British Analytical Center Globalization and World Cities Research Network. And just imagine, Less than a hundred years ago, this was just a small fishing village, and now it's one of the largest megacities. Well, let's leave it at that because listing all of Shenzhen's strengths and records would take a 20-minute video of its own. So now that we've got Shenzhen covered, what about its neighbor, Zhongshan? Zhongshan is one of the few Chinese cities named after a person. It was originally called Xiangshan, and in 1925, it was renamed in honor of Sun Yat-sen, known as China's Sun Zhongshan. This city doesn't appear in the top rankings all that often, and with its 3.1 million people, it's eclipsed by its neighbor, which has nearly 13.5 million residents. Its GDP isn't as large as Shenzhen's only about $50 billion. However, the Chinese government is actively working to turn the city into another tech hub of the country. The city is advancing its industry and establishing national-level research centers. Moreover, it has the Shengshan National Torch High-Tech Industrial Development Zone, which, as of 2021, attracted 430 foreign-invested enterprises, including 20 from the Fortune 500 list. For example, Canon and Casio have operations there. Also, Zhongshan is home to one of China's largest seaports, which mainly handles bulk cargo and containers. In short, the city is attractive both to foreigners and locals, particularly those from the neighboring Shenzhen. It's clear that these two cities are closely connected. Goods need to travel from one city to the other. Some people live in Shenzhen but work in Zhongshan, or vice versa. But there's one problem with all these movements the Pearl River, which makes it impossible to simply drive directly from one city to the other. As obvious as it may seem, 
the problem is not only recognized by us. There have been bridges connecting the two cities for a long time, with the most convenient one being the Human Bridge, as it literally connects the two cities. It was built back in 1997, yet the past century didn't stop it from setting records. For example, its main span stretches 2,900 feet. At the time, it was considered the longest in China. Some of the less impressive features include the bridge's total length of 11,900 feet, a structure made up of five large concrete sections, and the deck, which was specially designed to withstand winds of up to 200 feet per second. This kind of wind isn't uncommon here, so the solution was very useful. By the way, it's worth noting that Human was generally the first large suspension bridge to be designed and built entirely by China itself. You could say that this bridge marked the start of China's renowned bridge-building era. However, at some point, the bridge just wasn't enough. The cities were growing quickly along with China, which made a massive leap from the late 90s to the present day. This led to an increase in the population. When the bridge was built in 1997, Shenzhen had only 3.5 million residents. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the city has 13.5 million people so the population has increased by 10 million. Meanwhile, in Zhongshan, the population grew from 945,000 to almost 3.1 million. And this is just in the cities. There are so many small settlements nearby with populations that aren't even accounted for in the official figures. You see where we're going with this the bridge, which was built for a certain number of residents with a small margin for the future, clearly wasn't meant for such a huge population. As the population grew, so did the number of businesses, stores, and everything else that requires cargo transportation between the cities. Moreover, the trip from Zhongshan to Shenzhen had recently been taking about two hours. Doesn't sound too long, right? For the Chinese, that's long, which is why in 2016, cargo ships started appearing on the Pearl River again, carrying construction materials, rebar, and everything else needed for the implementation of a new Chinese mega-project one worth nearly $5 billion. The project required islands. Unfortunately, there were none in the needed spot on the Pearl River, so the builders began implementing a strategy perfected over the years and used for the Hong Kong airport the construction of two artificial patches of land. The first one is the Eastern Island. It was built south of Shenzhen Bao'an International Airport. Now, those arriving in one of China's and the world's most developed cities are greeted with a beautiful view of the man-made land, covering an area of 3.7 million square feet. Even those who appreciate visually pleasing things will be delighted the island looks like something from a science fiction movie. The second, western island is the same type of structure, but the area is much smaller just 1.4 million square feet. This is primarily because the island is located almost in the center of the river, making the delivery of materials and construction much harder than right by the shore as with the eastern artificial land. 